Hi guys, so this is week one, lesson two. So the second class of three um, on our first week of um, online learning. Um, so we're gonna continue on from where we left off the last day. So I, was, I asked you to do those 11 questions. I see some of you have up, uploaded them to the homework section of your of your one note already so i didn't have a look at a couple of those so if you haven't done them so far if you haven't managed i know people are having issues with with, with getting schoology codes and getting into one note but keep emailing me keep asking if you're having problems this is a, a learning curve for everyone so don't worry if you're a bit behind if you're a bit, you're a bit behind kind of do the bit you can so don't be spending hours and hours at this you know if i give you an assignment like i did yesterday um give it half an hour 35 40 minutes at most and then if, if you only get the question seven out of 11 well you know that'll have to do me i'll have to just you know get on with it and um, so just do your best um and get as many as much of it done as as is humanly possible the same today um do, do as much as you can because it's going to take us a while to get the hang um get a hang of this and um get the technology right so um do your best and any issues just give me a shout and i will try and iron them out so anyway this is lesson two um of our first week and um, we're continuing on looking at percentages um and we we'll start with having a quick look at the questions from from last night so make sure they're as soon as you can upload it to the homework section of your OneNote so i can go in and take a look and make sure everyone is kind of coping with the um these these kind of questions okay so Back into the OneNote, into decimals and percentages, and here is our questions, um, which is questions 1 to uh, 11. Okay, so this is what I asked you to do last night, these ones here. And um, so I'll just have a quick look through, I'm not going to do them all because that'll take ages, but um, we'll have a look at how you do them, and then we'll see, um, so if you get any wrong, then you can go back and you can check where you went wrong and, and fix it. So if we take the first question here, is that 47% 40 of all pupils in a class are boys. What percentage of the class are girls? So I'm not gonna do you for it, we're gonna tell you how to do it, um, just in case anyone um, couldn't do it. Um, so obviously, you know that uh, um, the maximum is going to be 100%. So if you take 47 away from that, it should give you your answer um, for how many, uh, what's the percentage of girls in the class. Same for question two. If they're, if they're telling you that 35% of the balls are blue, what percentage of the balls are red? You're just going to take 100, take away your 35, and that's going to give you your answer there. Okay, so 100 minus 35. For all of question three, um, to be honest with you, um, I would throw them into a calculator. I mean, you could go down the road of um, doing, you, you know that 25% is 25 over 100 um, or a quarter, and multiply that by 32. Sorry, multiply that by 32, a quarter of 32 or a quarter by 32, remember of means multiply, or straight into a calculator, so all these ones here and all these ones here, you just do, so if we, if we take part D, it's just going to be 70 multiplied by shift, sorry, 70 multiplied by 1, and then hit the shift on your calculator and hit the percentage button, so 70 by 1%, and that will give you your answer. And you do that for all of those there. So you can do it this way over here, or you can do it using the calculator. And exactly the same then for all of these guys here. If you're throwing them into a calculator straight away. So for this one here, it's just gonna be 300 multiplied by 55 shift percent equals. And that's gonna give you a percent. And we did lots of those before the break. Ones like questions seven and eight. So if you have, if a charity makes twelve hundred euros selling raffle tickets, twenty five percent of the money is used for prizes and print in printing. How much of the money goes to the charity? So if you say, okay, well, we're wondering, well, twenty five percent goes um, for the prize and the printing. How much does the charity actually get? So the charity is obviously going to get 70 percent. So there's two ways you can do it. You can do um, one thousand two hundred by twenty five percent using your calculator, like the way you would have done up here in question six. And that will give you, what, 25? So th that'll tell you how much went for prizes and printing. And when you get your answer to that, you take it away, you take it away from 1,200. So you get 25% of the 1,200, get your answer, and take that answer away from the 1,200. And that's, and, and, and that's going to give you your answer. Probably the quicker way to do it would be, instead of multiplying by 25%, multiply by 75%. But that will give you the answer straight away. So there's two ways of doing it. And the same, um, question eight is, is, is pretty much exactly the same. 
um, and and sorry, and the same and the same with question nine. There are similar type of questions, just working out um, percentages. Okay. Um, over to this side, then I know I kind of I'm, I'm going one uh, one two three six seven. I'll just do them in order because it's easier to follow on the screen. Um, if we go down and have a look at question ten. So I'm skipping all these because they're the same job, exactly the same as questions six, seven, and eight. Um, question eight is, is like the thing you'd, you'd see in a restaurant with your bill. If they say if soup is 350, roast beef is 10, ice cream is three, and coffee is two euro, what's your subtotal going to be? So you're going to um, add, 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 and that's going to give you the answer for this box here. And then they say, oh, it's a service charge. You have to give the staff some of the percentages. So when you add up this one and this one and this one and this one, and you get the answer in here, we get, we multiply that answer. So we're gonna multiply whatever answer got by 10%. So what's that going to be? And that answer goes in here. And then you're gonna add this box and this box to get your final answer. So you're adding the cost of the meal. There's the cost of all the, all, all, all the things in the meal. And you're going to add your 10% of the total to get the final <clears throat> total that they're going to get. And I'll show you the answers to these in a few minutes. The last one, question 11, I'm going to correct in a, in a couple of minutes. But what I want you to do first, I want you to pause this video. And the reason I'm getting you to pause this video, I want you to open up your homework, open up these questions that are done. And I want go into your OneNote and I want you to scroll across and I want you to correct your homework. So I want you to mark there the, all the answers there. Questions one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And when you get as far as 10, I want you to stop. So stop after 10. Because question 11 is more kind of stuff you'd see in a higher level exam. And I'm going to go through that one with you. So if you pause the video now and go and correct your homework. Okay, welcome back to the video. So let's have a look at um, the homework. So, uh, sorry, question 11 even. So we say, right, question 11, because there's a lot in it. It's not that it's more difficult, really. It's just that there's a lot, there's an awful lot to be thinking about here. There's loads of numbers and there's loads of parts and it's just annoying. But we, have, we need to kind of break these down um, and, and, and see, well, how is it, uh, how do, we do, how do we do question 11? So we break it down into small parts. John has a certain amount of money in his bank account. So he has a certain amount of money in his bank account. We don't know what that amount is. He carries out the following transactions. Sorry, it's just taking a second to load. My apologies. Okay, yeah, there we go. He, he writes checks for four amounts. So our information, so this is going to be four amounts that he writes checks for. He also withdraws 400 euro using his Visa card in the ATM. And then he lodges 20% of that total amount back into his account. At the end of the week, his balance is 507 euro and 88 cent. We want to find out what's the total value of the checks written. I'm going to start with that. Before we before we go on and start reading and bogging ourselves down, we start. How, how, how much how much how many checks um did he write? So what is the total value of the checks written? Well, the first check was um thirty euro from up here. The second one was forty five euro. The third one was ten euro, and the fourth one was for. 400 euros so our total amount of checks that he wrote and, when, and even if we're not sure and we're, we're bogged down we're going to take mark straight away by just figuring out how much checks how much was the what the value of the checks that he wrote and the total value of the checks that he wrote then was um 400 and i add them up 485 euro i think um the second one what is the total value of the withdrawals made during the week Okay, the total value of the withdrawals made during the week. So if we go along and we say, right, well, um, he lodged 20% of the total um, amount withdrawn from his account. Right, so if, if the total amount, if the amount of checks written was 485 euro, 
and he lodged and he um if, if he lodges 20% of the total amount withdrawn from his account so we get 20% of that number into our calculator and that gives us 48 and a half by 2 gives us 48 and a half by 2 gives us 97 euros 97 euros and we'll check this answer over on the left hand side and over, over on the right hand side in a second so here's our first answer here and here's our second answer here we've done a part one and a part two the last part um a part three is how um, what was the amount lodged to the account we've already worked that out have we oh yeah we've worked out so that's uh, that's going to be 97 euros so we've worked out um um, the total value of the checks, we've worked out the total value of withdrawals and the amount that he has lodged to his account. Okay, so that's nice and handy. Part B then, to work the problem backwards to find out how much money was in John's account at the beginning of the week. So we know how much was in at the end of the week, but we need to know how much was in at the beginning of the week. So they tell us here in the question that the, at, at, the, at the end of the week, he had... 507 euros and 88 cents. Now look, well, what other information then? How has he messed around with that? Like, how has he messed around with that number to make it either bigger or smaller? Well, we've worked out that he's also um, withdrawn 485 euros. So that's been taken out, but that was in the account at the start of the week. So we have to add that back on. 485 euros. <coughs> Excuse me. And the only other thing he's done was our number here, our 97 euro. And that is that is money that um, has to be taken away because that was lodged during the week. So that's going to be minus 97. It's kind of reverse thinking. You think you should be taking away the 485 and, add, and, and adding the 97, but you're working your way back to what he had at the beginning of the week. That's where the mistakes can be made. So your answer there is going to be 895 euros and 88 cents let's just check that is that correct make sure 895 euros and 88 cents okay so question 11 and um, is, is done so what you should have done there you should have corrected your answer and more to the point figure out where did i go wrong am i not getting this am i doing something dodgy right i'm going to send them an email and i'm going to ask and um, could, could, could we, um, sh show us how to do question six or question 11 or go through number seven again something like that but you have all your answers over here on the right hand side and then you have your solution there to question um, 11. Okay, moving on slightly then, right? Um, we have things like <clears throat> increasing by a percentage and decreasing by a percentage. And this formula here is key. This formula here is key. Increase and, um, or a decrease over the original number by 100 over 1. So if you want to figure out how much something is increasing or decreasing by, you, on the top of the line, we put... Whatever the increase is, whatever the decrease is. So it could be increased by 5%, increased by 10%, decreases by 5%. Over, and this is where I mean, the common mistake is, it must be over the original number, not the end number. So what the percentage changes over the original number by 100 over 1. So if we take a quick look at this example, this one's in your book. A bookshop has reduced the price of Harry, Harry Potter from 10.35 to 805 so the price has dropped fine corrected two decimal places the percentage decrease of the price of the book so remember that formula now. so it has decreased from 1035 to 805 so the difference then that we're interested in is going to be two euros and 30 cents so if you have a look then we now have our top number and then we say, well, what was the original number? Well, the original number, what you had, was going to be 1035. So it's uh, what we had at the start here. So we're going to put the original number over the, uh, sorry, the change over the original number. Here it is here. Change over original. And to get from a fraction into a decimal. So remember, going from fraction to des to percentage you multiply by a hundred over one you see that's what they've done there they've multiplied by a hundred or by a hundred over one and your answer then is 22.2 percent 
that is the amount of money you're saying. You say when you go into a sale, you say save ten percent, save seventy five percent. That in this case, this person is going by buying that book is going to save twenty two point two two percent. Okay, and all the all the all these questions here now follow this formula. So this formula is going to be key. So down here is going to be your homework. Okay, and again, as we know, you have homework on day one, and you have homework on day two. And you won't have homework on day three. So this part here is going to be homework due before homework before um is going to be due before lesson three. So what you're going to do is you are going to do three, four, five, and six. Do these six questions. Either write them in, write the answer into your homework copy, take a picture and upload to the homework section here in OneNote. So I have all your names all down the side there, which are homework. So I can go in and have a quick look. If you haven't got the homework from the last day, try and get that done and try and get it into the homework. Just so I can make sure that you're understanding working out percentages and working out percentage increase and decrease. Tomorrow you won't have homework. So it'll be great between, um, even, even between now and Thursday. I mean now and Friday that you get... Um, the homework from yesterday uploaded and the homework from today uploaded. The, um, tomorrow is just going to be working through questions of the, on the revision exercise. So here's your homework there. Um, homework due before lesson three. Upload to homework section on one note. And again, any issues um, with passwords or logging into this, that and the other, not being able to do things, don't be worrying. Don't be spending a lot, a, a lot of time on this. Being at home learning is difficult. So any attempt at all to um, <clears throat> to engage and get your homework done and uploading it is is, is, is very much appreciated. And I think you know, you're all doing great just to be able to engage at all with uh, with this kind of learning. But anything, you know, I'm, I'm here um, all day, every day. So send me an email if there's any issues at all. Okay, mind yourselves. Bye-bye.